Hello and welcome back to GameSpot's continuing coverage of E3 2015. We saw so many games at the various conferences that uh, some of them just got crammed in a little bit. Uh, and one of those games that I really wanted to see more of was Riggs being developed out of uh, Gorilla Cambridge. I, right. I had no idea. Uh, Tom and Pierce, thank you so much for coming on uh, the GameSpot stage today to tell us uh, more about it. And I want to know more about it. So this is a 3v3 uh, Morpheus VR arena combat nonsense. Tell me about it. That's <laughs> right. So yeah, we're, uh, we're here showing Riggs. It's a first person arena based um, combat shooter exclusively for Morpheus. And, um, We've chosen to set this game 50 years in the future. Mm. We're colliding elements of shooting and sport, high-end um, cars, etc., crushing them all together to create these super exciting sports mm. with superstars battling it out in combat arenas. I like how the, 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 the effect you guys have used of kind of jumping in and making it nice and like the sport motif. I was trying to think of other first-person shooters that have done it. There was something I used to play in the late 90s that was kind of like that. It was an online game. But you don't really see it very often. It's like most shooters, especially uh, competitive shooters, are kind of nitty, are kind of gritty or like, or you know, based on some sort of war, be it a real one or a fictional yeah. one. Uh, you guys are kind of just having fun with it. I think one of the things we wanted to do was, was do something a bit different as well. I mean, everyone loved mechs, but you know, mm. there are a lot of mech games too. And we felt there was an opportunity on Morpheus to push the boundaries a bit more and not do kind of traditional slow pace kind of war mechs and actually yeah. do something that's much more agile and, and, and something where you can kind of really explore the arena in faster, more intuitive ways. Um, and that's what led us onto the kind of sporting mechs that you pilot. So you're, you're the guy who's driving the mech and you're like the sports star in it. And that's what I think is, is really kind of cool. Uh, I'm very fortunate in my position in the industry to be able to like get access to this type of kit. And at GDC, uh, the Morpheus uh, was, was, was out in, in full uh, fashion for people to use. Um, I've used it, I know what it feels like, but it must be difficult to try and like sell the idea of VR to, to gamers because it's kind of one of these things where you don't really know until you've popped the headset on. It's almost impossible. Um, I mean, we, we've, we've struggled various times mm -hmm. to show this off, which is why it's so cool we're actually at E3 doing this now because the best way to explain it is for people to put the kit on, to yeah. play it, and for us as developers watching the reactions when people are taking it off and just going, that's the most amazing thing I've ever seen, that's what it's about. That's where VR's at and that's what Morpheus is really pushing. You kind of get a bit, you get a bit conditioned to it, so seeing people's first time kind of experience <laughs> where it is suddenly the magic and they're pointing stuff out and yeah. just forget it's on them. It's, 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 really it's cool. like seeing shell shock, you're just used to it after a while. Just season pros, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so tell me about how this controls, because anytime I've used the uh, the Morpheus, I've used PlayStation Move controllers, and it's been yeah. like one to one. Presumably, with being having to like walk around an arena, you guys are using a DualShock Four, right? So we've um, we've gone through a number of control iterations, and you know we're pre-alpha at the minute. We're still working on it. But um, one of the things we've found most intuitive is actually just looking uh, and that being where you want to go. And it mm. feels crazy because people go, you're making a shooter, use the right stick for turning. Yeah. Um, but we found it super intuitive that you, you look and push forward and you head in a direction and wherever you actually focus your head, that's where your guns are pointing. Uh, and it gives very, very pre precise shooting that's really, crazy. really quick. So are you guys using the move controllers then? Are not you, move, just you know, the, You are using the, the but shot. you're also using the head tracking. Yeah, that's because right. presumably that's, that, I guess that's a, a massive sort of design hurdle is because the way first person shooters look is that your crosshair is always in the center of where you're looking, but virtual reality can't look work think, that way, right? I think what we've learned through this process and what everyone that's developing on Morpheus is that all the things you know in design <laughs> go out the window. <laughs> you start again, you build these things from the ground up um, and you have got to tailor the experience for Morpheus. You've mm. got to build a game that works for it. Um, so when people tell me, oh, you know, I want to play it with dual sticks, it's like, we've played that yeah. and the game we're making is better. It just really is. Excellent. Um, is this only going to come out on Morpheus? Are you guys going to have a version that's just like for people using on a DualShock? So at the minute we're we're exclusively targeting Morpheus cool. and that's taking every single waking hour <laughs> of our day to develop that. <laughs> How big is the team in Cambridge? Uh, we're about 80 at the minute. 80, okay. So it's it's, it's not that big when you're considering how much uh, uh, technical um, expertise is required to use this new technology. Uh, how do you guys feel about the state of virtual reality? Because uh, I think a lot of us in the press thought that like E3 2015 was going to be the year that VR really was sold, but actually. It feels like that's probably going to be next year because we're you know we're going to see Oculus in Q1 next year. Morpheus, we don't have a date, we don't have a price, we don't know when it's going to come out. Um, like even stuff with Valve VR, like it's 
going to come out, but nobody really knows. For you guys, when you're making this game, I'm sure you don't have any clue when you're going to release it or any of that. But when you're making this, are, do you feel like you're making a game for a technology that's finished, or do you feel like you're sort of evolving while the hardware changes? I mean, I think, as Piers said, it's a massive learning curve. So, like, you know, it's only recently we got the latest Morpheus kits, and that in itself is like, oh, we need to adjust certain things yeah. and comfort levels. Um, and so it's taking that experience and then kind of really fine tuning stuff. And that's kind of what's exciting now. We're getting feedback from people who are playing it. Um, we ourselves are learning. And so we can kind of build on that momentum. Um, and I think kind of to touch on your point about VR, what VR needs is, is proper game experiences. And, and yeah. I think certainly the reaction we've been getting from people is that, you know, Riggs feels like a proper game that they can play with their friends. And it's not just a kind of demo. And like, you know, we had some guys this morning who literally ran in to get to the front of the queue <laughs> so they could play it again because they played it yesterday. And yeah. it's like, that's a good sign for VR. You know? Oh, they played it yesterday yeah, and they, they ran in to, to do it back. again. That's pretty excellent. Like, especially considering when you run into this room, there's about a dozen amazing games that you get to choose yeah. from. Um, let's talk a bit about uh, the actual game modes that are in it. I know you're doing like a 3v3 thing over there. Uh, how big do you expand that? Because honestly, when I saw your trailer and I saw it was just like a small group of people playing, it was kind of refreshing. Like so many games are getting really big, like Halo now is a big 24 player um, experience. So what are you guys going to do? Is it scalable or is it very much like a small, tight team-based game? I, w I wouldn't classify it as a small game, but the, the main thing is it's a team-based game. Mm. We want this to feel like a sport. And we've, we've played with the numbers. We've added smaller numbers. We've got increased the numbers. We've actually found that three is a really, really good way of being yeah. able to coordinate team activity. So you can get people working on defense, on attacking. Uh, and that's the number we've settled on, just because the game modes work really, really well. It's also a good number for juggling in virtual reality. You know, when you're on Morpheus, there's a lot of information to take in. Yes. So being able to understand where your team are and where the opposition are is really, really important. Excellent. Is this a game where you? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how early you guys are on, in terms of like the actual game modes themselves. But is this a, a one and gone? You die, or do you respawn when you when you get killed and you're back in the game? So we have no death in the game at all. You know, we're it's a sports game. It'd be yeah. crazy for people <laughs> to die. And it, who'd sign up for that sport? So uh, when when your rig takes enough damage, you eject. So we've oh, got cool. a, an amazing sequence that fires you up in the air. It usually catches everyone. It's a big woo moment in virtual <laughs> reality. Uh, oh, of course, yeah, yeah. And then you, you get to look into the arena, choose a location, and you respawn there. And we fly you and descend you into your new rig that comes up. <laughs> so. I like it. It's like, it's like Batman Arkham Knight. You get shot out of the Batmobile, and you just land back in it on the other side, uh, almost. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on and, and telling oh, us all about you. rigs. Uh, before I let you go, what is your sense when you're showing people these games, when people see VR for the first time? I know I played the, um, the London Heist demo on Move. On Move. Um, and it really just, things you don't really think about, like looking at somebody and then they realize that they're looking at you and yeah. the, the eye contact and the, the character kind of says, stop looking at me or whatever. Like, there's so many ways in which games can be different on VR, or unique on VR, that you can't do on a, on a, in a regular game. What is your experience being in that booth, watching people uh, um, enjoying VR? Uh, what's your biggest takeaway from that? I think it's... One of the things you kind of hear a lot about games is that they're kind of immersive or unique. Yeah. And actually, it's not true a lot of the time. But <laughs> yeah. for VR, I genuinely think it is true. And that's like the most exciting thing. And, and you know, we talked about it, you don't get the experience until you put it on. You have to try it to see it. Um, and so, yeah, seeing those reactions, that's, that is the coolest thing. There's a bit of magic there, so you do have to try it. It's amazing. Excellent. Uh, Riggs, we'll see you at some stage in the future. You guys don't have a date or anything at this stage, do you? No, we do not. No. no. And obviously, Gorilla has a wonderful relationship with Sony. Is this a project that you're definitely only going to be doing on PlayStation? It's yeah. uh, Morpheus exclusive. Morpheus exclusive. All right. Uh, Pierce and Tom, thank you so much. Thanks, thank, you. Thank, you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming over to E3, all the way over from Cambridge. Um, uh, really looking forward to seeing more uh, from Riggs. You guys at Gorilla are doing some really interesting stuff. Thank you very much. It must be a thank fun you. time. Uh, uh, we are still here on the GameSpot stage all day long. FIFA and Madden coming up next. Uh, we've also got No Man's Sky on later on today. Speaking of uh, London-ish based developers, um, uh, Alienation's on later. Pro Evolution Soccer's on too. Uh, but we got Madden on next, so stay tuned. We'll be back in just a minute.